Well, good morning, everyone. This is Mr. Richmond, and this is Life Science, and today we're talking about animal classification. Up to this point, we've talked about classification. We've talked about the classification groups, why scientists use classification, and we've talked about all those groupings, the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and we said we work with start with really, really big groups and work our way down to smaller and smaller groups. And we do that to help us to organize uh, the entire living world and to be able to find what we're looking for. Well, today we're going to look at just the animal kingdom. And we're going to look at some different kinds of groupings that we use commonly. Uh, and it helps us to better understand the different kinds of animals that we have here on planet Earth. First of all, we need to understand that the animal kingdom is divided into two main groups. Now, again, these are not the classification groups, not the kingdom, phylum, class, and all that. This is a separate way of looking at animals and looking at living things. So, But the two main groups of animals that we have here on planet Earth are going to be the vertebrates and the invertebrates. The vertebrates and the invertebrates. And vertebrates are simply animals that have a backbone. And if you don't know what a backbone is, you can take your thumbs and you can reach around behind you and run your thumbs down the center of your back and you'll feel those little bumps. That's your backbone. That's what allows you to sit up straight, right, and attaches the bottom portion of your body to the top portion. It's where your nervous uh, system, the spinal cord, runs all the way through that and it goes all the way into your skull. And it's that way on... Uh, all vertebrates. I've got a little picture right here. You can see this is a human's. Uh, this is a vertebrate right here, and this is this. This is the uh, spinal column, the backbone, and inside of that is uh, those bones, those individual little vertebrae, which is what each one of these little pieces right here are call, called, and they join together the vertebrae, and inside that would be the nerves, and that's what allows you to feel things. Uh, your sense of touch. So you can see this is the backbone of a human. Here we have it on a frog or a toad. I don't know what this is. Maybe a dog or something. A bird. But all vertebrates have that in common. They all have a backbone. Okay? And that bony uh, long length of vertebrae running down the center of the back. And then we also have the invertebrates. And that just simply means that animal does not have a backbone. Uh, you think of a jellyfish, jellyfish doesn't have a bone at all. So uh, no backbones with the invertebrates. So vertebrate, backbone, invertebrate, no backbone. Now, we're going to focus on vertebrates right now. And we're going to look at the characteristics that all vertebrates have. And obviously, again, it's the backbone. But all vertebrates tend to have sharp senses. That means that they can either see hear, smell well, they have got a, may have a sensitive sense of touch, right, taste, but they have, they tend to have sharp senses, they may have more than one, maybe good eyesight and good hearing, just depends on the animal, and they tend to have larger brains than the invertebrates, so sharp senses, that's the first one, all vertebrates tend to have sharp senses, at least more so than invertebrates, and larger brains than the invertebrates. Now, there's five, there are five basic groups of vertebrates. We have the mammals, the reptiles, the amphibians, the fish, and the birds. And those are our five vertebrate groupings. It's going to be really important that you remember that, okay? So let's just quickly look at those groupings, look at their individual characteristics, and maybe that will help us to better understand those groupings. So we start with the mammals. All mammals have warm blood. That means that they their temperature is regulated by their body. It stays the same whether it's cold outside or hot outside. You pretty much stay the same temperature. For instance, people tend to be around 98.6 degrees on average. Even if it's 32 degrees outside, inside our bodies stay the same temperature. And also, mammals have hair or fur and produce milk. The mamas produce milk to feed their babies. So, you know uh, mammals very well. And we'll look at a few right here. There's a mammal, a deer. Notice it has hair or fur. And notice little babies nursing on mama to get some food because mama produces milk. Uh, 
There is uh, some others. There's the tiger, Mr. Squirrel, Mr. Lion, Mr. Camel. Uh, oh, Lord. What is that? I don't even know what that is. Badger or something? I don't know what that is. A funky creature. And so all of these are going to be... Uh, these are all going to be mammals right here. All right, hair, fur, uh, and they produce milk for their young. The mamas do, and they're warm-blooded. All right. Then we have the reptiles. Now, reptiles are not warm-blooded. They're cold-blooded. That means their body temperature changes based on what it is outside. So if it's cold outside, inside, they're cold. If it's hot outside, then their body heats up with the outdoor temperature. Now that can be kind of a problem because if they get too hot, it can kill them. And if it gets too cold, that's not good either. So they have to regulate their body temperature on hot days by staying in cooler places and on cold days coming out in the sun to warm up. Uh, reptiles have dry and scaly skin. When you touch them, their, their little scales are rough. You know, a lot of... A lot of times we tend to think they're slimy, but they're not. Reptiles have dry, scaly skin. And let's look at some of them. Uh, your reptiles are going to be your turtles, your lizards, snakes, your crocodiles and alligators. Those are all reptiles. You know, if you touch that snake, which I don't know if that's a coral snake, red on yellow killer fella, maybe that's a corn snake. But anyway, if you touch him, be careful. Uh, it's not going to be slimy. If you touch that gator, be careful. But it's not going to be slimy, and neither will these guys. It'll be a rough, dry, scaly feel. And, uh, and again, they're cold-blooded. All right? Our third group is going to be the amphibians. Now, when we talk about kind of slimy to the touch, these are the guys that we're thinking of. They're also cold-blooded, like the reptiles, right? They can't regulate their own body temperature, whatever it is outside. That's what they are inside. They do have that moist skin, it's kind of slimy, and no scales. They're not scaly like, say, a, a turtle or a lizard or a snake. And uh, those, some examples of, uh, of an amphibian would be like a salamander. You probably don't even see those very much, but ones you probably know more about would be like, uh, oh, I don't know what that is, a frog. You know, frogs tend to be kind of a slimy... Uh, you know, they're going to be slick. You find them in the water and what have you. So those are going to be your, uh, those are going to be your amphibians. So again, cold-blooded, moist skin. And I, I'll talk more about those in the future, but this is just an overview to kind of get us started, okay? And then uh, we have fish. Fish are also cold-blooded, but instead of having lungs to breathe like the reptiles and amphibians, and uh, amphibians or weirdies, we're going to talk about them. But uh, they have gills. They have gills, and they take in oxygen from the water. So, and they live their entire lives in the water. So uh, fish, if you know what a fish is. I mean, it's not like a super difficult thing to figure out what a fish is. There's a fish. Ah! And there's Nemo. There's Nemo. Fish. So again, cold-blooded, and they live their entire lives in water, and they have gills to take oxygen in from the water. And then finally, the last group, just real quick, the birds. And again, if you can't pick out a bird, we're in trouble. But the birds are pretty easy. Birds have feathers, and birds uh, are warm-blooded creatures. Birds are warm-blooded creatures. I was trying to click on some different ones. That's a pretty bird. But they're warm-blooded. And most of them can fly. That's kind of fun. Uh, and they have feathers. So there are a few other characteristics we'll talk about later on. But again, this was just a quick overview to introduce us to the animal kingdom and help you to begin to see the differences between uh, the different types of vertebrates uh, that we have, those five groupings, and also help you to understand the difference between a vertebrate and an invertebrate. And again, vertebrates, they have that backbone that made up of the vertebrae, those individual little bones locked together that are flexible. And the invertebrates, of course, they don't, they do not have a backbone. And if you think of a jellyfish, you know, you got it, although there are lots of other 
types of invertebrates. So anyway, we'll talk more about that in class. This was just an overview of the main information I wanted you to understand. And again, remember with the vertebrates, they tend to have sharp senses. I see you, I hear you, I smell you, and they tend to have larger brains than the invertebrates. Okay, so that's a good starting place, and we're going to end today's video. Again, it's animal classification. So hope that helped out, and we'll talk more in class. Thanks.